Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss the problem D score of a tree from court forces round 845 div 2. And the problem states that you are given a tree of n nodes rooted at 1. Every node has a value either 0 or 1 at time t equal to 0. At any integer time t greater than 0, the value of a node becomes the bitwise XOR of the value of its children at time t minus 1. So at time t, it's checking for the value of its children that was present at the time t minus 1. The values of the leaves uh, become zero since they don't have any children so in the uh, at time t equal to one itself right so what would happen is that the root would say that we don't have a child uh, the uh, not the root but the leaves would say that we don't have a children so they'll uh, get a value zero how about at time t equal to one at time t equal to one the uh, values of the children would already have be, uh, the value of the leaves would already have been uh, zero itself right so even the immediate parents or the nodes at level 1 if you are st uh, like starting level 0 from the chill, uh, from the leaves they would uh, also have a, a value 0 if you are not able to understand it don't worry I am going to explain it in detail let st be denote the total sum of the values of all the nodes at time t let fa denotes the sum of st across all uh, across all values of t such that t range ranges from 0 up till 10 to power 100 it's just uh, just like a very very big number it's actually not required to be some, uh, something of this sort even if they have uh, like checked for 10 to power 2 into 10 to power 5 it would still be valid cool so the task is to find f of a for all the 2 to power n initial configurations of zeros and ones in the trees print the sum modulus 10 to power 9 plus 7 cool so then they have pro uh, like the input is given in a way that firstly they'll provide the number of test cases then they'll provide a n that is the number of nodes and then they'll be providing u and v that is a bidirectional edge so actually i don't think they have mentioned a bidirectional edge or something but i'm assuming it's a bidirectional edge because only that makes sense in this case so yeah uh, they'll be providing us a edge that is u and v and we have to return the answer cool let's try to understand it now so let's say this is a tree right it has several nodes 0 1 2 3 4 now it it can have every node can have only two values 0 or 1 right so how many number of uh, ways are there to re rearrange it so for every node for n nodes i can have either zeros or ones so it's basically multiplying n multiplying 2 n times so or be, or we can say 2 to power n right so there are total of 2 to power n combinations of assigning zeros and 1 to this tree so that is the first thing that we need to understand now what's happening is that at each uh, at the starting we can have any configuration so it could be like 0 1 1 1 0 1 anything right but as soon as your time becomes t equal to 1 what would happen is that your uh, children would now say or the leaf node would now say that we since we didn't have any of the uh, like we didn't have any children so we'll set a value 0 what about your uh, other nodes that are not the leaf nodes so the, uh, now the other nodes would say or the internal nodes would say that i will be having a value of xor of my children so right now this is having 0 0 but at time t equal to t minus 1 so at time t equal to 0 they were having a value 1 0 right so 1 0 corresponds to 0 itself or oh, sorry 1 itself if we xor them up so it will say i will be having a value 1 it also would be having a value 1 now what about time t equal to 2 at time t equal to 2 this would remain unchanged but what would happen is this would check that okay uh, now the value are 0 0 in my children so i need to have a value 0 over here it would also say that okay time at time t equal to 1 the values were 0 0 at my children i'll be also having a value 0 but over here the value still would remain unchanged but anyway it won't matter because it's actually set to 0 now the same thing would happen over here at time t equal to 2 it, it would say that okay t at time t equal to 1 something changed in my children so let, let's check that out so the change was in such a way that it actually doesn't matter cool so this is the entire theory behind it now let's understand how to do it so the first thing is that the node which has most num or the longest length so let's say this is my tree right let's try to assign levels to it so this is level 0 this is level 1 this is level 2 this is level 3 right what about this this is actually level 1 now why why is it 1 and not 2 this was 2 right this should also have been two, but that's not the case because we are just checking the levels based on the children itself. So this is the, this is a leaf node. From leaf node, it's just upper level one, right? So it would be having a level one. What about this case? Like it had two 
uh, it has two levels right it had a level uh, it could have a, have a level one as well but we assigned it to level two itself so a node would be having the maximum thing so over here these had level zero this had level one right but when we'll be checking the level for this we are assigning to the maximum value so it can have a level two if we check this so over here level can be two if we check this or it could it could have a level one if we check this right so over here we'll assign it a level to itself because we are checking for the maximum values so firstly we'll be trying to give each node levels right after that the easy observation is that for any node right for any node it could have zeros or ones at a time at a time t greater than zero it could have a zero or one depending on its children right so that is the that is the first case also this is this would be homogeneously expanded so let's say if i'm having zero x number of times then one would also come x number of times because we are checking for all the possible permutations or, po or all the possible ways of arranging zeros and ones so at the end they would become homogeneous i can give a proof for that but it's not required for this question so we can proceed even without that proof so cool these are the two things that i know now so firstly i arranged levels into it and now i know this that zeros and ones would exactly come same number of times so what about the leaf nodes let's check for the base case what about the leaf nodes okay so these are the leaf nodes it can have a, it can have a value 1 or it can have a value 0 now uh, a total of 2 to the power n combinations are possible in 2 to the power n minus 1 combination it would be having a value 1 in 2 to the power n minus 1 combination it would be having a value 0 right so the entire uh, entire contribution of it to the sum would actually be 2 to the power n minus 1 i hope that's making sense right so for all the leaf nodes their contribution to the sum would be 2 to the power n minus 1 what about the nodes at level 1 nodes at level 1 would say that i can have a contribution of 2 to the power n minus 1 for sure that would be my uh, like own values and then i am at a level that is one higher than that so i'll multiply it by 2 because we are calculating the answer for all the time period so what is happening is that initially let's say this was a tree and it has any value so i'm denoting it by x right let's make it a bit more interesting let's add one more node so at time this is time t equal to 0 right at time t equal to 1 this would become 0 right at time t equal to 2 all of these would become 0 oh, sorry so this was x okay i messed it up sorry yeah at time t equal to 0 all of them are x's or uh, like all of them could have all, whatever value they want at time t equal to 1 all the neat nodes would be having a value 0 right all of them are zeros now at time t equal to 2 all of their parents would start having a value zero so now these are having zeros right at time t equal to 3 even their parents would be having a time uh, value zero also once a node have has a value zero because it uh, because the xor of it uh, its uh, leave nodes have now become zero so there's no way it's going to become uh, one again right so this would be contributing only for one unit of time the leaf nodes are contributing only for one unit of time their immediate parents are contributing only for two units of time when i'm saying contributing i mean that they are contributing a non zero value to the sum right their parents would be contributing for a uh, three units of time and so on and so forth so this is why levels are important because the level actually would indicate that how many uh, for how many uh, times each node would be contributing to the sum cool so with that i can say that this these nodes would be contributing only once and they'll be contributing 2 to the power n minus 1 the uh, nodes at level 1 would be contributing two times so i'll just multiply it by 2 the nodes at level 3 they would be contributing three times the nodes at level 4 would be contributing four times that's exactly what i need to do that's it so other than that now how do we calculate levels so if you are already doing d question on code forces i'm assuming that you are familiar with the dfs bfs level order traversals and uh, all such stuff so it's a very basic thing to do i'll uh, show you the code itself one interesting thing is that i messed it up two times so what i was doing is actually uh, i forgot that there's a edge case now what what happens is that when when you are at the root itself when you'll write it its degree so it degree would come out to be uh, come out to be zero when all the nodes have been satisfied 
let me just show you the code it will make more sense then in a second cool so yeah so what i'm doing is initially i'm taking all the edges i'm doing a u minus minus b minus minus just because uh, they are providing a one base indexing i'm using a zero base indexing so that's why i'm reducing that uh, after that if n is equal to 1 so this is a trivial case if n is equal to 1 there's one node only so its answer would be one itself because there are only two possibilities it can have a value 1 or it can have a value 0 cool uh, after that i'll set levels so in levels i'm actually denoting that what node is at which level also over here i'm starting my levels from 1 rather than from 0 because i'll be multiplying the answers directly so i'm starting my levels for levels from 1 and for all the nodes which have a degree equal to 1 so degree equal to 1 would be for those no those nodes which are actually at the leaf right so i'm pushing all those nodes into uh, into my queue after that i'm setting my level as 1 and i'm incrementing my level cool then what i'm doing is that uh, I'm doing a level order traversal using BFS. This is pretty simple. I'm not going to explain this. Cool. And at each of uh, when I'm trying to push them into the queue, I'm checking if the degree uh, is now becoming one. In that case, I can push that particular uh, particular node. Okay. I've no clue why I wrote one V over here, but anyway, so it would actually uh, work. Okay, so it's not V, it's LV. Cool. It was just a variable. I got confused here. Cool. So what I'm do, uh, doing is that I'm incrementing my uh, levels at each of this iteration, and then I'm storing the level once I can uh, push the node or all of its children has been traversed. So degree would become one only when all of its children would have uh, have been traversed, right? After that, I'm setting my multiplier. So my multiplier is basically two to the power n minus one, if you remember. So that's what my multiplier is over here. Then I'm checking for all the levels. I'm just adding multiplier into the level of a particular node, and I'm add, uh, multiplying that and adding them to my answer. So after that, I'm printing my answer. That's it. That's it for this question. This wasn't a tough thing to do, but yeah, the intuition actually uh, could have mis misled you or something like of that sorts. But if you found this interesting, let me know. If you still have a doubt, please let me know. Uh, so if there are any doubts, you can like. Uh, Put, put that in the comment section below or you can ping me on discord itself i am always available on discord and always uh, more than willing to help you out thanks a lot guys